All right, hey guys, so welcome to the JB's Nature Walk. Real quick, guys, I've started a new Patreon page. So by becoming a new member today, guys, you can receive new releases of my video before I post it on YouTube, and I include a link below the description of this video. All right, guys, let's get to the video. Hey guys, you can also support me by buying my books, Nature Inspiration and Nature Inspiration Prints. These are inspiration quote books featuring my nature model photography, and they're in a the link below the description of this video. You can also support me by buying my prints on my website, Beautiful nature wildlife photography of different subjects, and I've included a link below the description of this video. Let's get to it, guys. Hey guys, so there's one thing I forgot to talk about. So, let's talk about the benefits of bird watching, right? I don't know what I forgot first. Birds fly. So, birds have a, you guys said, bird's eye view, right? Birds have perspective. What's the difference between us and birds? A lot of us these days don't have perspective, we lack perspective, right? Because we rarely have the bird's eye view. You can have the bird's eye view without having wings like a bird. But that's the main thing. But having this bird's eye view allows you to, I talked about this briefly in my own blog, but um, you can see the predator-prey dynamics in this earth dimension that we live in. There's predators and there's prey. We're subways to these guys, right? Predators have more knowledge, but not because, um, it is knowledgeable. What's the thing that makes predators more knowledgeable, guys? They're always observing. Now, they're not just observing for prey, but they're observing the environment, what's in the environment. And I know I've talked about this before, the plants, the seasons, what's in my environment, stuff like that. I talked about this earlier, right? Predators do a lot more work or a lot more homework. And because they're always observing, they know what's here. They know how to make a living better. They know what to avoid if there's danger, there's a threat nearby. Prey, on the other hand, they, unfortunately, they don't really, some prey do, but not enough of it to become predatory, to protect themselves. They do a lot more consuming. If you observe like cows or deer or, I just do a lot of observation, right guys? You see a lot of prey. Um, from my experience or from what I do, you are the consumers, right? A lot of people, um, <laughs> it's a lot of consumers. I'll say in the United States, right? A lot of consumers, right? I, I talked about this before, guys, but you, you guys know what I'm getting at, right? A lot of consumers, even there's predators and prey in the human world too, guys. I'm just kind of, I'm hinting you guys, you know, you know what I'm talking about. There's consumers. There's businesses, right? Well, same thing here in the, in the animal kingdom. There's predators. There's predators that feed on the prey based on their conscious level con um, in terms of like, so predators, they are very conscious of the environment. And because of that, they like the extreme level, right? Like all the way up top. And you look at birds like birds of prey, you know, they are always circling, right? They always have that bird's eye view, they have perspective. So they can see what they can eat and what they can't eat. They're always perching high above, right? So that's the thing about being a bird. You can pick up on, you can observe, okay, I don't wanna go in this area because I see this animal and it can possibly eat me, right? So that's the thing, that's what birds give you. It gives you that logical thinking where, you know what? I know this is a prey predator dynamic and I know what to avoid. I know where to go to get X, Y, and Z. I forgot, there's one thing I forgot to talk about guys, um, but I'm glad I am talking about this. So yeah, so birds, birds give you perspective and that's basically, they fly. So they have perspective, but when you're earthbound like us, we just have an eye level view and sometimes we don't know what is the prey, where is the prey, we, we don't know. Sometimes we don't, a lot of us don't know, right? Sometimes I'll be kind of um, getting a little shaky in that department. 
but um that's what i'm saying birds or observing birds you're gonna learn that um real quick <laughs> there's birds of prey that hunt birds and hunt other stuff too so you're gonna have to know that so that is something to keep in mind of you know what i mean but i forgot there's one thing i forgot there's a tool i forgot to talk to you guys about it's the flight pattern I know I talked to you guys about the markings or the patterns of um, color markings on the bird's feathers, right? Yeah, I talked about flight patterns. So each bird has their unique flight pattern. Like ducks, they have that strong direct flight pattern and a strong wing beats, wing beats, right? Um, what else? Crows have, I had this in my blog post, have that slow, deliberate wing beats but they also in their direct flight but like this you know crows are they flap their wings a lot slower than ducks the ducks they're like you know ducks and geese either like the same and birds of prey they they have different flight patterns too but i would say the most um the usual flight pattern you see birds of prey do is they're like circle right they will practice thermal or dynamic soaring so thermal soaring is when basically I'm um, see so I can uh, show you give you an example you know like the sun right here it's heating down the, uh, the earth right so the heat rises right so because of that birds of prey they can see thermals right oh no I saw something so they see the thermals and it's basically hot um, hot pockets of air or bubbles of boiling water so it basically looks like circles basically it's rising from the earth right because of the sun warming up the surface so these birds of prey will see it they can only see it at a certain distance if it's too close to them they can't see it. but further away they can see it so they flap their wings and try to catch it and they circle now that's thermal soaring so they all like go upwards right you see a lot of birds of prey do that um dynamic soaring is when there's wind deflecting off a landform so like in case of like habitats that feature that kind of air um or i'll tell you like this um that support that type of flight capacity is like mountains um even open field habitat too um if you go in the midwest for example i used to go over there and um there's a lot of it's pretty windy out there so wind is constantly blowing and so because the wind is blowing like that it allows the birds to play um um energy efficiency in the air they can easily catch that and they can just circle easily where the benefits of dynamic soaring is the wind is constantly blowing or even by the water too right it's easy for the birds to play to take off into the air with the downside to thermal soaring is it it's tied to the sun so if the sun isn't here like nighttime for example it's not here and the sun isn't up there is no thermal so and you see a lot of birds play they kind of wait to a certain point until they can take off they're waiting for the sun to finish heating up the earth's surface so they can take off and you know so in the area that i'm in it's probably gonna be thermal soaring i mean i am in open water but we don't have a strong breeze in this particular area that i'm in so a lot of birds are gonna have to wait until it is warm enough the earth is warm enough so the air from below can rise and they can start thermalating i call it thermalating and all that See, I don't know why I forgot about that. So wait a minute, I talk about everything else, but I forgot to talk about um, um, flight patterns. Yeah, flight pattern is key. So I know I'm talking a lot, a lot at you guys, right? I'm talking about how to identify birds with their markings, right? Then I'm talking about um, like where you can find them, the bird calls. Now I'm talking to you about flight patterns. Well, yeah, because each bird flies differently, so you're going to be so conscious of every that's what i'm saying the benefits of bird watching you're going to be highly conscious and that's basically what birds are teaching you because birds are highly conscious of everything they do because they fly the higher you ascend in consciousness the more you're going to notice a lot of stuff than the average being i should say and that's what the lesson birds are going to teach you you're going to be so conscious that you're gonna know everything. And that's basically the point of it. I already got some more boat people coming.
that's all I want to talk about, you guys. I'll talk about the the book in a few. All right, catch you guys later. All right, hey guys, welcome to the JV's Nature Walk. Sitting on a bench, I'm gonna talk about the bird book because I wanted to talk to you guys. Birds of North America. One of my older books. Actually, you want to invest in good bird books when you first get into bird watching. Like for example, this is what I mean about when we talk about field marks. It's a mallard. And you see like the suit markings. The male, female, male has the green head, and the female is drab brown. You want to be like very um, conscious of that type of characteristics of each bird. Let me give you another example. I'm in the hawk section now. Um, hawks might be too confusing, actually. Look at his osprey here. Oops. See how the osprey is mostly white, but the dorsal, the back, is brown. On this side, is white. Ball eagle. Nice and chocolatey brown. White tail, white head. Beautiful picture, perching. You're gonna look for stuff like that. Let me look up a common species, like I believe the blue jay. See that? Beautiful. Nice crescent head, the crown. And this is a different species right here. This lives in, in Florida, I believe. But yeah. Definitely good bird book where it shows you really good. Oh, it also shows you the range too, I forgot. The blue jay lives year round. The purple is the year round range. So that's the eastern United States and the west is not year round. Or I don't even think they live in the western part of the, the country. But it's mostly an eastern species, so. It tells you the range map and all that stuff. Even the year round range, if it's year round or it comes there in the summertime, stuff like that. So you want to familiarize yourself with stuff like that when you get the bird book or well, get your first bird book then continue getting more bird books don't stop and i also told you about the all about birds website you can use that website a lot it has really good range maps tells you what area in the country the birds live in um good bird pictures it tells you like the habits of the birds flight behavior what kind of things they eat, hunting behavior strategies. It talks about all that stuff in that website for each bird species. So, but this is a good stepping stone. So get birds book like this. Use that website I told you about, allaboutbirds.org. Um, do your own due diligence and kind of use your own experience and what you learn and kind of um, use your knowledge to figure out more about birds in your specific area. But yeah. I definitely wanted to show you guys this because you know, this is a big part of it. Like I start with bird books and then you go outside and look for birds, right? There's a lot of birds, man, each state, each country. So that basically it. I mean, this book is pretty detailed. It's an old book, but it's a lot of, it, I love the paintings. Like I love the paintings of each bird. You can learn about each bird species. Um, yeah, that's basically it, guys. So, yeah, this is. I shall say this is the end of the benefits of bird watching. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.